So yeah, my question is, how do you make love with your practice and especially with... What's your favorite Japanese anime? Can you send me your the drum, drum ship of the beat? You better not know where this is from. All right, guys, before we jump into this long ass yeah. video that took me forever to edit, I just got to let you know real quick, Memphis, Tennessee, me and my band, Everything Yes, are going to be inside of you. We got my boy Saxologic on the show, Sean Reeser, Cole Sype, Jacob Dupre. We're going to be playing May 25th at the Memphis Drum Shop Soundstage at 7 p.m. We are releasing our album and doing an album release show both on the same date, May 25th. Memphis, Tennessee. So if you're nearby, hell, I don't even care if you're nearby or not. We had some lady buy three tickets from Virginia already. So if you're interested or you're thinking about getting a ticket to the album release concert, you better think fast because the seating is super limited. It's an intimate area. The stage, the room, it all sounds great. It's a perfect place to do an album release party slash concert slash hang. Tickets to that are in the first link in the description box. I'm just, hey, you, 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 you gotta get... Let's get into the video. I just got to my hotel room. Check this out. Wow. Look at that. You see that guy right there? Pretty sexy. Today, I'm doing my very first clinic and I'm just going to take you through it, okay? We're going to we're going <laughs> We're going to get through this together. I'm not going to lie, I'm very nervous because it's my very first drum clinic ever. It's in another country and it's sold out. Let me take you along on this journey. <laughs> I love you guys. We've arrived. Oh my god. <laughs> One. We're all gonna let a little beat. Yeah. You ready? All right, all right. You ready? Three, two, one. Yeah. 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 Oh. oh. I'm not gonna lie, doing drum clinics was something I never really planned on doing. And that's not because I don't like them, it's just that, you know, frankly, I always thought I was too stupid to keep a drum lecture going on for 60 to 90 minutes or however long. So I had to put on my super serious face for this. Like I said, this is very serious, so listen up. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But then I thought, hey, you know, I'm always talking to my communities on, on YouTube comments, on the Instagram comments, and let's not forget the Discord. And what I've learned from a lot of these conversations is that everyone is kind of having similar <laughs> similar struggles on their path to musicianship. And it goes way beyond just technical ability. So I figured, hey, what if I identified the most common issues within my own community and I addressed them in the form of a drum clinic? 
And probably no surprise to any of you, but one of the most common themes I saw was how to become successful as a musician, or at least have a better chance at getting there. Now, I don't claim to be some big successful YouTuber, drummer, <laughs> no, but I figured out some tips along the way that could act as stepping stones for my version of success. Because I understand everyone's version of success is different. It could be financial, it could be fame, it could just be chops. For me, personally, I just want about 40 to 50 waifu anime girls. So I put my super serious face on and I put my two cents on the subject. Today, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what it takes to become a successful musician in this day and age. Tip number one, only being really good at your instrument. Like let's say you're, you're the sickest kid ever. You play all these fast talks, you're so fast. That doesn't mean that much. I know I know it sucks to hear. It's not enough, right? It used to be where you, could, you were just expected, you know, sit down, hit some drums, boom, paid, you're done. But now you got all this extra stuff to learn. Oh, uh, ooh. I said a curse word. But now you got all this extra stuff to learn. You gotta learn how to use a camera. You gotta learn how to edit. I mean, who wants to do that? You gotta learn how to mix. You guys know what a DAW is? Yeah? Raise your hand for Logic. Raise your hand for uh, Ableton. Ah, that's my boys. Reaper? Reaper? Okay. Okay, those are the only three that matter, so. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Even if you don't wanna do stuff like YouTube, because I, I know I didn't wanna do it, but. Now all of a sudden I'm on, I'm on YouTube and I'm here because of it, which I'm, I'm grateful for. But we'll talk about that later. But yeah, even if you don't want to learn how to use a camera, you, you don't want to learn how to edit, you still got to develop some other skills in some other areas. For example, just being a cool person to hang around. Because nobody wants to go on the road with you or play a gig with you if, you know, you're like the cocky guy, you stink maybe. <laughs> or uh, just an all around douchebag. You know, nobody wants to hang around that. Introduce y'all, well, I'm not sure you already know, to my new friend. So at the end of every clinic in Asia, we had some type of jam session. In Taiwan, I got the incredible honor to play with 2021's Hit Like a Girl contest winner, Yu Chao Tang. Listen to this young lady. I'm pretty sure she's like 14. <laughs> So yeah, my first drum clinic ever was pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie, it was very nerve wracking at first. You know, I never had to get up in front of everyone and do like a type of drum seminar, but it's cool because everyone that came was super warm and super chill and super funny. And it made me feel right at home. Yeah. <laughs> I also ate bird saliva. We're on our way to the studio. The day after the clinic, my brand managers took me to this incredible studio in Taipei, Taiwan, where we would do, you know, a little video slash photo shoot for the new drum set I just got. Alright, so we just arrived at the top studio in Taipei, entitled Mega Force. Mega Force. Oh, I hear some drums. Hey, that kid's going home with me, boys. That was really cool, and the studio was incredible. Shout out to Mega Four Studios in Taipei, Taiwan. Y'all are killing it. The next step is. Stop comparing yourself to others, right? This is... Yeah, you like that, pretty serious, huh? I can surprise you sometimes, you know? I'm not all just muscle. Big man, funny man, play drum. Uh, uh. What I mean by that, I did the clinic in Taiwan a few days ago, and one kid asked me, he was talking about how he felt so frustrated because he kept watching all these drummers that were way better than him. I'm like, dude, you're like 12, shut up. <laughs> Oh good. But the reason why I included this tip was because it's not that anyone is better or worse than you. It's just that they and you have something different to offer. If you keep chasing sounds you hear from your peers or your favorite drummers, you're going to start to sound like them. But if you keep following your voice, stay in your lane, you're going to stand out.
We just landed in Malaysia. Bruh. Before we get into the Malaysia section of this video, I just want to show you guys around. This place is so beautiful. I'm with my squad. Where are we Hello. going? Where are we going? We are going to Twin Tower. Twin Tower? Yes, yeah, Kuala Lumpur, KLCC. <laughs> yes, yeah. Almost there. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, he's stealing. Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Going inside the Twin Towers. Going inside. Uh oh. They about to die. <laughs> so the Twin Towers is a huge shopping mall. Come get your furl up. Come get your long champ. Co ache. My boy Justin Bieber over here. Nice place to bring a date, for example, Mr. Lee. Hi. Isn't this a romantic place, you think? Yes. This is our first date? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, tonight we do clinic number two. And although clinic number one went very well, there were some things that I wish I'd done better. So we're going to take those lessons and apply them into tonight's clinic. Always try to get better. No matter what you do, always look to get better. All right. I'll see you tonight. Tomorrow we fly to Tokyo, so uh, wish your boy luck. Mr. Lim, what's your favorite thing about Malaysia? Everything. Everything? Yeah, everything. Uh, that's a good answer. Terry Maka say. We just pulled up. Laptop, camera bag, symbol bag. Time to beat some drums. What's up, dude? Oh, dude, look at that ugly guy. Oh, dude, is that what we're playing? Yo. Let me get a good look at these drums real quick. God dang, that's sexy. Damn. Look at this. Lynn. <laughs> Where are we at right now? Uh, Azara. Azara. Shout out Azara Music School for this sold out clinic. I have no idea why so many people came. <laughs> but we about to do it, all right? I'm here with my boys. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, Zach. Um, welcome to Malaysia. I hope you're enjoying your stay. I love it here, man. The food is spicy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna get used to that toilet, bro. <laughs> First of all, I have uh, one question, and that is, you know, um, I think it's normal for like uh, just drummers to, you know, find inspiration somewhere, and you know, it's like the number one platform to do this is social media. So a lot of like TikTok and Instagram, and over there you see a lot of drummers doing some crazy stuff, right? But then, you know, uh, one stereotype comes out from this is that, you know, uh, people often say that drummers on social media, if they were to add every single fill in every single part possible, they would do it. So basically, it's just a lot of like fast stuff, even though like say a song is going on and they'll be doing that thing for like the start until the end of the song whereas you playing in a band in front of live musicians it's a completely different thing right oh so, yeah so like you know you gotta like give the guitarist a space and then when the vocalist is doing his thing you don't want to cut him off by overplaying and that kind of thing so what's your opinion on that and what's the differences that's a great question because you know i do both i started out gigging making like 25 bucks a night and then i got into the youtube thing started doing the social media. It's funny you mentioned super fast stuff because I never used to be the chops guy. You know, I was all about sensitivity, you know, and touch and groove, yes. <laughs> and now all of a sudden I made one video and I'm screaming chops and now I'm the chops guy. Like what, it's not fair. That's cool. I will say that when you get put in that situation where you're playing with real musicians on the bandstand and you're overplaying, they're gonna let you know. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or they won't let you know, which is even worse, because then you'll be by your phone like, why is it not ringing? <laughs> so my thing is, have the maturity 
to give the guitar player, to give the bass player the space they need to make the music grow. And the only way you can develop that is just by playing with more musicians live. If you practice in the practice room eight hours a day, you're gonna sound like a practice room drummer. If you, if you play to the camera and post fast fills eight hours a day, you're gonna sound like an Instagram drummer. You know what I'm saying? So balance it out, man. You know, make your bag on the social media, but play with real musicians as much as you can. That's also just gonna help you become a better player the more you play with actual musicians. I think tonight I'm gonna to play with some of y'all, yeah? Yeah, did that help? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for answering the question and I have one more thing and I hope this is not too much. Oh, I don't, yeah, go for it. Can I have your drumstick? You want my drumstick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. It's, it's my, that's my, that's my jam. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Next question. Right there. The Malaysia Clinic was absolutely incredible. I mean, we had this big drum shed at the end. We had some kid doing push-ups. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Also, the people were hilarious and the drummers were so killing. Bro, what did Yo, you guys just we bring? We got the Minos, bro. Mino, Mino, Mino. Yeah, we got the 100% authentic. $20,000 miles. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, it was already time for me to pack my shit yeah. and head to Japan. Tip number two. Have a clear goal in mind or goals. I think this is funny because going back to the YouTube thing, the reason why I started a YouTube channel was because your boy was broke. I just finished college, well I didn't finish, that's a different story. But I, I just got out of school, I blew all my money from the last gig because I was expected to go on another gig, you know, it was one of those gigs where you get contracted for like a certain amount of time, so you get like the big bucks, you know? I was like, oh I'm good, let me blow all this money from the last gig, Who saving, what is that? You know, I'm, I'm you know, packed up, getting my chops right for this gig work, and then COVID happened, yep, COVID happened, and there goes all of my money for the next two years. So here I am, broke, no gigs, got this little janky camera. I'm like, man, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, bro. In hopes of getting one to two students a week, make a little bit of money, right? That was my goal. I wanna start a channel so I can get one to two students a week. Then I figured out, man, I teaching is boring, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is boring. So, you know, going back to what I said before, make a goal, but understand that those goals can change. Change can be a good, a good thing. So, still broke, I'm not teaching. As a man, let me make a stupid video. I never watched drum videos growing up, okay? I'll admit, I never watched drum, because all they are is paradiddle, how to play a paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left. Who wants to watch that, bro? I went on YouTube looking at like prank channels, dumb trolls stuff. I looked at it from, okay, if I were to watch a drum video, what would I want to watch? So I said, you know, I'm gonna make it myself. So here I am at the camera like, yeah, making dumb faces. So now all of a sudden, I'm not a teacher, I'm a YouTuber, you know? I'm like, oh, shit. I didn't want to do this. No one's gonna ever take me seriously as a musician. But I said, you know, no, no. I'm gonna use this opportunity as a chance to practice, right? So what I would do, I would write these songs because I wanted to get really good at composing and then I would put these little dumb songs out. I would include them in the dumb videos. Do you guys sell Funyuns? Seriously, Funyuns? Have you guys ever watched some of my videos? Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but, but I would put them in the videos, and that was like my little my little window to shed, right? To practice. I'm like, okay, this is a good tool for me to get better at composing, right? You learn all the chords and make a little drum beat. I kind of mask the practice as this entertaining video that comes off as not serious, but there's a little bit of seriousness in there. Everything else is completely me. Like, I am truly a dumbass. All right, guys. We just arrived in Japan. Made some, made some new friends already. <laughs> Very famous street drummer here in Japan. And tonight is the final clinic to conclude the tour. Look at this place. Wow. So there's been a running th theme out here in Asia where at the end of every clinic, we do a jam session, which is, I think it's a great thing. I don't think I've ever seen that in a clinic. Then again, I don't really go to clinics. Tonight, we're gonna be jamming. 
we traded some floors. So Japan was a little different. The clinic was actually held in a music store. And the music store was located in a shopping mall. Oh dang, it's huge. <laughs> Y'all take card here? Yes. We'll buy that. Look at this. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna get that for Nathan to take on the road with us. Oh, look at that. And the room we would do the clinic in was about a room like uh, half this room size. And it was set up for more of a jam session. And now that I think of it, I think the event was literally called Jam with Zach Grooves or something like that. That's us. <laughs> what was your name? Takeshi. Uh, Takeshi. <laughs> Are you coming tonight? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> It's nice to officially meet. That's how drummers meet. We have to play together. Okay, thank you. <laughs> officially met. We took us from the airport last night. We met then, but how drummers meet, we have to play together to get acquainted. <laughs> That's a clip. Oh uh, yeah, my question is, how do you make love with your practice and especially with the metronome? Some because sometimes like it give you like make you want to sleep, especially with the metronome. How uh, do I make love? Yeah. <laughs> All right, look, y'all, if you're young, close your ears. If you got kids, get them out of here because we're about to get serious for something. All right? So making love, All right? Let me show you an example. Making love is a lot like playing a jazz solo or playing behind a jazz soloist. So for example, you could be playing a soft little groove right when the saxophone starts playing, playing the solo. Pay, pay attention because this is the serious stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna be serious, yeah. So let's say there's a saxophone player. He's got a solo. So I'm gonna play four bars of just a normal groove, and then I'm gonna bring it down to the saxophone solo, right? So. You know what that is? That's the foreplay. That's the kissing. No, the neck licking. Sorry if I got a little graphic, but he asked the question, not me. Next question. Hey. Hey. How you doing? What's your favorite Japanese anime? Mm, Naruto. That's probably my favorite. Naruto. 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 I wish I could do busking in the streets somewhere in the U.S. Yeah, you yeah. should. Come to Nashville. ナッシュビル。ナッシュビル。どうどう。ナッシュビル。おお、できる。ナッシュビル。おお、できる。カモン。ハビエブルペイオンストリート。ワンタイムオンアクシデント。ああ、ああ。やらないやらざるを得ない
we were joined by this incredible local bassist, Yasuto Anda. <laughs> It was pretty funny how we couldn't communicate with each other beforehand that well because, you know, I don't speak Japanese and they didn't speak the best English. But when we started playing, it was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Konnichiwa. I know you now. Nice to meet you. <laughs> That's a wrap. Nice <laughs> As soon as I get home, I'm sleeping for like three days. Can you send me your the drum drum sheet of the beat? Which one? The drum sheet of your beat. The beat. Which beat? <laughs> um, the beat. <laughs> you want to play it? Yeah. Can you play it and show play me it? the beat? Yeah. Slow motion. The beat. Huh. Yes. Huh. You better not know what this is from. <laughs> you really listen to the groove. A lot of people play it wrong. And what you're hearing is the drummer, he's actually playing three notes on the kick drum. Yeah, he's not playing a floor tom or like an extra snare. He's playing three notes on the kick drum. Right? This is an educational moment right here. <laughs> so this, this beat he's referring to. Right there. Trust me, I've heard this song many times. <laughs> I did not expect it to do that today, but. Thanks for the question, man. Thank you. I'm back with my boy. I got Nathan this gift yeah. from Taiwan. Play the Mario Kart lick. <laughs> A Malaysia audience member brought these cloths for both of us. That one's Nathan's. This one's mine. I already opened it because I got pretty excited. Also, got these from Japan. Avocado Doritos. I also got this gift. Shout out to you, bro. Putting this in my wallet. Well, that's all I got for you today. Asia was amazing. The people are amazing. The musicians are amazing. The food was incredible. I mean, come on. You can get ramen at 4 a.m. wherever you want. I mean... They also have 24-hour foot massage parlors, which is interesting. For my flight back home, I had to buy an entirely new suitcase. Hang on, I'll show it to you. I'm not kidding. I bought this entire suitcase just to bring back ramen. Called it my ramen box. And yes, I packed it up tight. The first ever clinic tour was truly amazing, and I really could not have done it without you guys, Dixon drums, and Mino cymbals. So for that, I'm just pretend the microphone is you if you're over 18. For those of you who are looking to do a similar thing someday, maybe you, know, maybe you want to go on your own clinic tour. I hope this video helped. Seriously. All right, guys. I will see you on the next one. Hey, it's me, Goku. Subscribe to Zach Grooves or else me and my goons Vegeta and Piccolo pull up on you and steal your Dragon Balls and your wife.